Hi guys and welcome to Fandom Newbie. My name is Shruti and today's video is going to be a weekend reading vlog. Now I have a really fun weekend planned with my friends and I also plan to do a lot of reading. I've set an ambitious goal of reading four books this weekend. They're all pretty like short, quick, fun reads so I should be able to do it along with like all of the cafe hopping and socializing that I have planned for this weekend. But that's the plan and I thought that I would take you guys along with me so yep without further ado let's jump into the book that I am reading first I actually started reading this book yesterday uh and I got like quite like I got like halfway through it and that is The Mysterious Affair at Styles by Agatha Christie um, yeah, let me just like sit down and give you my initial thoughts about this book. So The Mysterious Affair of Stars by Agatha Christie is, I think, her first book, but it's definitely her first Poirot book. So it's the first book which features the detective Hercule Poirot, which is one of the most famous Agatha Christie characters. Now, this book being her first book, I feel it's still like it has that clear Agatha Christie signature. The only thing that I am finding a little bit like different in this book is that in the other in the other Poirot books that I have read, um, there seems to be a very logical link between the clues that Poirot finds and his deduction. Like it's very easy to fill in the gaps between the clues and his deduction. Whereas in this book, right now, it feels like the the gap between the clues and what like Poirot is um like what Poirot is thinking and his analysis of the situation his deduction there's like a huge leap <laughs> between the two of them and that's why this seems a little bit like too fantastical in the sense that like yes we know that Poirot is a very very intelligent detective and he sees things that like you know other people don't see and he's very quick to like make assumptions and prove those assumptions right um but in this book it just seems like a little bit too far-fetched so far the other thing about this book is I think the other Poirot books are all written um, from a, like a third person narrator perspective whereas this one is written from the first person perspective of um, a friend of Poirot's. So that's also what is a little bit different but I kind of like that because like usually whatever I am thinking is what this character also sort of like spills out. So the character also calls out Poirot for making these like huge leaps in, like these huge leaps in assumption. Like he's like, why did Poirot think that? Like the character actually calls that out and I'm actually kind of liking that because I'm thinking that as well. It's like, how did he jump to that conclusion? So yeah, those are my two initial thoughts. I am really looking forward to reading it because this is Again, a very classic Agatha Christie murder. It's a closed room murder mystery where a wealthy woman has gotten poisoned. And in true Agatha Christie style, everyone who was in the house during that time is a suspect. And yeah, I have a few theories, but let's see what happens. I just finished reading The Mysterious Affair at Styles by Agatha Christie and as expected she brought everything together in the end so beautifully that it was just a treat to read. Now I was able to solve like a few mysteries in the book um, and I was able to guess why a few characters were acting the way they did but I could not guess the murderer so the plot twist at the end is quite interesting and it was very very fun to read as any Agatha Christie book always is it's just like your mind gets blown at the end overall I'm gonna give this four out of five stars because this is a fun cozy intriguing murder mystery that you will fly through so yeah check this out
I am vlogging as I walk in this plane in Bandra and everyone's looking at me and I'm very self-conscious but life of a YouTuber I guess. So we just finished lunch and now we are headed to a cafe. My friend is here. She's trying to avoid the camera. <laughs> Now we are headed to another cafe where we're just gonna sit, chill, and I'm going to read and I'll show you what I'm reading once we get inside. So the book that I'm reading is Ahelia by Koral Das Gupta and this is basically a feminist retelling of Ahelia's story from the Ramayana and this is the first book in the Sati series. Now if you see back here, the Sati series basically follows five women from Indian mythology all of whom had husbands or partners rather other than their husbands and yet these women were extremely revered and I guess through these stories we figure out why they are considered some of the most enlightened women in Indian mythology. Now I've started reading this book already and the writing is quite lyrical and it's really interesting so I'm excited to read more. Hi guys, okay so it is the next day, today is Sunday and I finished reading Ahilya yesterday evening and when I finished it, like immediately after finishing it, I gave this book 3 out of 5 stars but now upon reflecting a little bit, I just bumped up that rating to 4 stars. So yeah, a little bit to unpack about this book so let's get started. Um, basically we all know the story of Ahilya in Indian mythology and that is that she is a woman who gets cursed by her husband and is turned into stone because um, her husband accuses her of infidelity. Now this book gives us insight into Ahilya's mind and it basically poses the question as to whether Ahilya committed infidelity or not. And I think it does it in a really clever way. This book follows Ahilya's life right from the time that she is born, so when Brahma creates her, up until her womanhood. And essentially, we spend this entire book in Ahilya's mind. So it is like Ahilya basically narrating her own story. And so we get to listen to her most intimate thoughts and we get to view the world through Ahilya's eyes. And the thing that I really liked about this book is just how poetically and lyrically these thoughts are expressed in this book. So you really get to see um, Ahilya's like childlike wonder. So when she's discovering the world for the first time, the way, um, she, the way she views the world with so much enthusiasm and so much wonder, that is described really beautifully in this book. The other thing I really liked about this book is the way that Koral Das Gupta has described nature. She personifies almost every aspect of nature, so whether it's a tree or a river or a flower or like any aspect of nature in this book is personified and given a spirit and given a personality and I just feel like it really felt like I was reading a poem and it was so so beautifully done. Now, coming to the feminist aspect of this book, what I liked about it is how Ahilya is put in a situation that she really doesn't want for herself, but how she takes charge of her life and in her own way creates a place for herself in society, creates a place for herself um, with her husband and how she doesn't shy away from exploring herself, exploring her sexuality, her desires. It's just really, really well written. However, the thing that irked me about this book is the way that gender roles are described, specifically when it comes to the role of a mother and the role of a father. Or rather, what a mother's love is versus what a father's love is. And I feel that it was so stereotypical where a mother's love is nurturing and tender and harsh but with a lot of love whereas a father's love is like a father is emotionally distant is there to provide like the things that were spoken about these two roles and just how stereotypically gendered they were really bothered me <laughs> in this book it gives such a stereotypical image of what a woman is supposed to be, what a mother is supposed to be, what a father is supposed to be that 
yeah to me that just didn't fit right and that is why i gave it 3 stars yesterday but today as i've reflected upon it a bit more the writing style is so nice in this book it is so so beautiful and yeah the way that ahilya story is retold i think is done in a very clever fashion so today i give it 4 out of 5 stars and if you guys are interested in mythology and are looking for a cleverly written retelling then you should check this book out the book that i'm going to sit down and read now is a monster calls by patrick ness um i've heard amazing things about this book so i cannot wait to dive in Okay so I reached page 70 of a monster calls and to be honest I don't exactly know where this book is headed but it's been interesting so far so this book is about a 13 year old boy named Connor who is dealing with a lot in life um he his parents are divorced his mom is extremely sick i think she has cancer and all of the treatments leave her feeling exhausted and weak and he's also being bullied in school so he has a lot that's going on in his life and one night a monster basically turns up at his window and threatens him in a way um what i honestly feel about this book is that the monster has been sent to corner to help him in some way to help him deal with everything that is going on in his life and Yeah the monster isn't this like scary demon person that's going to eat Connor or like whatever I think in the end the monster is going to help Connor deal with his own inner demons so I think that is where the book is headed I'm not really sure but I am interested in reading this more but for now what I'm going to do actually is take a break from reading get myself a little bit of a snack and yeah chill out for a bit I don't know if you guys can see but it started raining outside. <sighs> Just the perfect reading weather. <sighs> When I started reading this book, I knew that it was probably going to make me sad. Um but I did not think that it was going to make me cry. I had read reviews where people said that it's very like heart wrenching towards the end oh, but yeah i have the last 15 pages left i'll finish this and then give you my final thoughts about this book Okay so I have composed myself now and um as you guys saw I finished reading A Monster Calls by Patrick Ness um I'll probably have like better thoughts about this book after I have processed it but what I will say now like the first thoughts that I have after finishing this book are that this is one of the best explorations of guilt and grief and anger and all of the emotions that you feel when you deal with a loss i feel like it's one of the best books that explores that um there's another book which i think is really good in the same realm and that is a stephen king book which is 
pet cemetery that also deals with the emotions that you feel uh, when you're grieving. And um, yeah, those are the themes that are explored in this book and I think they are done in a really, really good way. It is a very sad book. It is a very, it has that heart-wrenching end um, that I read in a whole bunch of reviews. And um, yeah, that's all I'll say. It's a beautifully written book. I think it's a very good book for teenagers. The main character in this book is 13 years old and all of the emotions that he is facing are explored in such a beautiful way in this book. So yeah, highly recommend A Monster Calls. Very good for teenagers. A very, very simply written book. So again, very good for beginners. So yeah, I really, really enjoyed this one. Okay, so after that pretty heavy book, I wanted to sort of like change the mood and the book that I want to start reading next is All Systems Read by Martha Wells. Now this is kind of like a sci-fi space adventure story uh, featuring a robot. So I'm guessing that this is going to be a quick, fun, uh, thrilling read and that's just what I need after something that was quite heavy. So let's start. Hi guys. Okay, so I have a few chapters left in uh, All Systems Red. But I just thought that I'd come here and let you guys know what I think about the book because if I actually wait till I finish reading the book, it might be a bit too late for me to vlog today. Um, but basically, like I mentioned before, this is a science fiction story and it follows a group of scientists who have been assigned this mission to go on a planet and uh, conduct certain experiments. But while they are conducting those experiments, they find that certain things like related to the mission are going wrong and now their lives might be in danger and so now they have to find a way to get off the planet. Um, the main character in this story is a robot. Now this robot um, in the past has gone kind of like rogue or something has happened to this robot where it has killed around 50 humans and the main job of this robot is basically to go with humans on these missions and protect them. So for him to actually kill 50 humans is something that is completely against like the protocol that this robot has to follow. And I think because of that and because of the fact that it's gone a bit rogue, um, this robot has now developed a sort of conscience and has also started developing feelings. And so um, this is the first book of a series, by the way, I think I forgot to mention that. But I think basically, uh, what this book is going to explore or what this series is going to explore is this robot coming to terms with who he is like also coming to terms with these like very human emotions that he is feeling whilst he is going on these missions with this human crew um, that are a bunch of scientists. The other thing that's really interesting in this book is also the world building. So um, there are mentions of like a corrupt government body, corrupt corporations in this world that uh, Martha Wells has built. And I am definitely going to be reading the other books in the series and I'm excited to see like how the politics also builds in this world and how the author will explore that. So yeah, overall I'm really enjoying this book. It's a really fast paced, fun, uh, quite thrilling um, space adventure and yeah, I'm excited to finish this book and I definitely feel like I'm going to read the others in this series. So yes, with that, I think I'm going to end the vlog over here. I think I've read some fantastic books this weekend. I think it, overall it's been a huge success. But yeah, if you like this video, give this video a big fat thumbs up. Leave a comment down below letting me know some of the books that you have read this past weekend or what's on your TBR for the next weekend. <laughs> Let me know down below. And of course, do subscribe to my channel because I'll be making more videos like this. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.